All right, let's pick back up from section 1.5. Let's look at this problem. Find the values of the constant sigma k that make the function continuous everywhere. All right, so let's suppose I look at, I don't know, the first piece of my piece wise, okay? This piece right here, just a polynomial. So therefore it's continuous everywhere. If we don't consider these restrictions over here, okay? Let's look at this second part. M times X plus one plus K. That's a polynomial function. So this part right here is continuous everywhere if we don't consider this part, okay? Now on the last part, if we don't consider this part, this is a polynomial, so it is continuous everywhere. All right, so let's see. So if it's continuous everywhere, each piece, if we do not consider these restrictions over here, what does that mean that we might have trouble with con or where does that mean we might have trouble with continuity at two and at negative one here? So let's see, let's look at continuity again. What were our three conditions of continuity? Okay. In fact, let's look first of all at two, okay? At x is equal to two. And let's consider the three conditions of continuity. Is f of two defined? Well, let's see. If x is equal to two, that would be this case, right? So you substitute in two right here, and you would have what? This part will give you m times two plus one plus k, right? Or we could say three m plus k. That would be defined. Think about it for a second. Um, if we think about this for a second, M and K are just some numbers. So three times some number plus some numbers defined. That's not a zero in my denominator. It's not a defined. So condition one checks out. Condition number two here, the limit as X approaches two of F of X exists. Does that exist? Let's see if it meets that condition of continuity. Well, let's go off to the side here and do scratch work. What do we say the limit as x approaches two from the left of f of x has to equal to the limit as x approaches two from the right of f of x. Let's see if this happens, or let's see if I can make this happen. Let's see if I can make it happen. Let's see, we have the limit as X approaches two from the left. If I approach two from the left, there's values that are slightly less than two, so it would be like right here, right? Where X is less than two. All right, so what does that mean? That means I use this piece of my function. So I have M times x plus one plus k is equal to, how about the limit as x approaches two from the right of f of x? If I approach two from the right, I'm looking at values that are slightly greater than two, that would fall in this category. So I'll use this piece of my function for f of x. So instead of f of x here, I use x squared plus seven. Well, let's look at the left side of this equation. How do I evaluate this? I sub in two for X since it's just a polynomial. Same thing over here. This is just a polynomial. So I just take this two sub in for X. Let's do so. So that gives me M times two plus one plus K is equal to two squared plus seven, that gives me three M plus K is equal to, what's that four plus seven or 11? Well, what do I have here now? 
I have an equation with two unknowns. I don't know how to solve that if I have just one equation with two unknowns. So I'm gonna come back to this part, okay? I'm gonna come back to that part. So let's see if I can find a new page somewhere here. Oh, no, I could not. Okay. Anyway, let's do this. We said that we need to check continuity of two and at negative one. So at x is equal to negative one. Check that. All right, condition one is f at negative one divided. Let's see, here's where x is equal to negative one, right? So what do we do? We substitute a negative one here and here. And what do we get? We get f at negative one is equal to two times negative one is negative two plus negative one is what? Negative three What's negative three plus 12. It's not. So what do we know? This condition checks out. F of one is defined. Condition two is the limit. As x approaches one, or does the limit, as x approaches negative one, I should say, of f of x exist. Now look at your left and your right hand limits here to see if that exists. If I can move this up here. No, I cannot. Go back to the computer. That's why there's kind of delays here because I've got to move around and stuff like that. Anyway. All right. So when is this going to happen? When is that second condition going to happen? When is that limit going to exist? That's going to happen whenever the limit, the left hand limit and right hand limit are equal, right? So approach negative one from the left of f of x. When that's equal to the limit as x approaches negative one from the right of f of x. See if you can figure this out on the old, like you might pause the video or whatever. All right, if I approach negative one from the left, I'm gonna be using this portion of my function. Two x cubed plus x plus 12. Is equal to the limit as x approaches negative one from the right. If I approach negative one from the right hand side, as values that are slightly greater than negative one, I'm going to use this piece m times x plus one plus k. Now, here we have a polynomial, so just sub in negative one here and here calculate. Sets so two times negative one cubed plus negative one plus 12. And what does that give me? We did that earlier, that's nine, right? Is equal to, what about this stuff? If I sub in negative one here, I get m times negative one plus one plus k. And this part right here is zero. Zero times m is zero, plus k is k. So what does that mean? That means k is equal to nine. So what did I just show there? I just showed the left and the right hand limits are equal whenever k is nine. So if the left and the right hand limits are equal, that means that this limit right here does exist, it means condition two. Okay, how about condition three? What is the limit, the limit as x approaches negative one of f of x, is that equal to f at negative one? Hmm. I'll be able to check that in a little bit whenever I guess, uh, I find something like, you know, well, not really. I mean, what is the left hand limit 
Let me find another color here. What is the left head limit right here of this function? It's nine, right? Didn't I force these limits to be equal the left and the right hand limit here? Okay, so that limit is nine. So this limit right here is nine. What's f of negative one? That's also nine, right? So condition number three checks out. Okay, now, what do they want? The original question wanted values of m and k. I have my value of k already right here. Maybe I'll write those over on the side. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll pick purple. M will equal to what? I'm sorry, k. k will equal to what? k will equal to nine, we said. How about my value of m? Go back to this equation that we had right here. And let's take that equation. And let's substitute in this k value right here now. We said that k was what? Nine. So I have from here, three m plus nine is equal to 11. 3m is equal to what, two? So m is equal to what, two thirds? So let me list out my answer over here. m is equal to two thirds. And you could go through and check this now and check condition three and it's gonna work out with those values.